Hi, welcome back to BizJet TV. It's Fab Polly here today with this great episode. And we're going to be talking about something that's not too great. Unfortunately, Thomas Cook Airlines in the UK just went bust. That's 84 aircraft now grounded with over 600 pilots and around just over 2,000 flight attendants now out of work. Not good, but before we get into this episode and see what we can learn uh, from this lesson, uh, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to BizJet TV, uh, give us a thumbs up, and if it's the first time on BizJet TV for you, please have a look around at the other content that we have here. I'm sure you'll find it interesting, all about business aviation and how this whole thing works. So let's get into today's episode. As I said, uh, Thomas Cook um, has uh, gone bust, unfortunately. It's 84 aircraft which are grounded. Um, mostly Airbus family, Airbus 320s and 330s. So lots of experienced crew now looking for a job. Uh, so the question is, why did this happen? Well, I think um, number one would be the internet. And I think because of the internet and low cost airlines, those two things combined. I mean, Thomas Cook was pretty much a charter airline and they, they had a package. So you'd buy, you know, the flight, the two weeks at the uh, hotel in Florida, uh, all, all in, and a rent a car, all incorporated into, into one package. And that's what they did. Um, and they had chain of hotels as well, and they combined the two together. But because of low cost travel, so low cost airlines out there, you know, the easy jets, the Ryanair's, the South Earth Airlines, the JetBlue, the AirAsia's, um, these airlines are out there, they have their own websites, you can go straight to that website, book a cheap flight for, you know, 10 euros or $10 or whatever it may be, and, and off you go on your holiday. Um, so those low cost airlines have seen, I mean, I used to work for XL Airways from Manchester, XL Airways no longer exists. Then we saw Monarch Airlines disappear and now we've seen Thomas Cook disappear. And I remember we used to go out doing our flights. Uh, very often we would take off together and we'd be going to Tenerife to the same destination, one behind the other. And we'd take off at the same time, land at the same time, get a 150, 200 passengers off and then get the rest on and, and head back to Manchester. Uh, and we'd meet their crews and say hi and that. Well, you know, these three airlines no longer exist. But what we've seen over the years, the Ryanair's and the, and, and the EasyJets have creeped into the same routes that these airlines were operating. And I could just see it happening. I said, you know, it's only a matter of time. And these so-called charter airlines are going to disappear and the, 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 their, their flights are going to be taken over by the low cost airlines. And because of the Internet, you can go on the Internet today and you can create your own package. And, you know, let's face it, probably even you watching this right now, you love to do that. You love to go out and find the nice, you know, Airbnb in Hawaii and then the right flight and, you know, combine the right flight to get there with your family and, you know, rent a car or a scooter or whatever it may be for your holiday. And people love doing that. They love, you know, creating their own holiday and putting things together. Um, and this is why, you know, an airline at Thomas Cook went bust. At least that's my, I mean, obviously there are probably other reasons as well, but I think those are the two main drivers. Now, what can we learn from this in private aviation? And are these two reasons going to drive certain private aviation companies out the window as well? Well, we have seen a number of apps come up where they, they say they're offering the Uber of private jets. Uh, you've heard me say before, I don't think this is ever going to work because a private jet needs to stay private. Uh, we've also seen a number of charter brokers out there, you know, big broker houses, you know, with, with 20 plus offices around the world. What they've been doing is, you know, they, they're driving the prices down and they're competing against the other brokers and the operators are the ones that are suffering. Because, you know, at the end of the day, if someone is brokering a flight, I mean, wh whether they sell the flight for, you know, $10,000, dollars or nine and a half thousand dollars yes they may earn a little bit less money but you know they're not losing money okay while the operators got pilots to pay maintenance to pay fuel to pay hotels to pay you know all these you know fixed costs that they have um, and they have to you know make a margin on top of that so uh, but you know because of the internet uh, what we are going to see and we're already seeing is that a lot of people that want a private jet for a flight They'll go direct to these companies. The challenge is going to be is you have to know what you're doing. And so a lot of the people that, you know, uh, go into the private jet space, they don't really know the difference between one jet and the other. They don't know which operator is safe and which isn't. Because, again, as I've said many times, the safety record in private aviation is not very good. It's five times worse than the airlines. So using a broker that can filter through and suggest the right jet to use, the right company to use, um, it's still still there. But, you know, like here on BizJet TV, you know, we offer a lot of information, a lot of content here. If you have the time to sit here and go through every single video, uh, you will have a clear idea or a clearer idea, let's say, of, of how to book your, your private jet flight. So, um, you know, to a certain extent, 
this is creeping into the private jet space, but you know, you just got to be very, very careful. And so using, uh, or even maybe if you are going to fly a lot, what I would suggest is bringing it on an expert, paying them a retainer fee per month and allow them to go out there and source the right aircraft for you for the various flights. That's another option that you can play. And they would be on your payroll. You pay them so much per month. They're available a bit like your concierge. And they'll and they'll book your, your flights for you so that's the way i see things moving here in private aviation lessons that we can learn from thomas cook going bust last year we saw monarch airlines that they're talking about some other of these uh these airlines that are going to go bust so let's go on to the subject of the pilots now these 600 plus pilots where are they going to go now they're out of work but you know easyjet ryanair recruiting here in europe uh jet two are recruiting british airways are recruiting um uh, klm lufthansa all those people that are looking for a few pilots as well on british airways um and then of course in the us there's a bit of a pilot shortage maybe some of them will go across there or to canada um and then of course we've got all the middle eastern carriers from emirates to etihad qatar airways they're always recruiting and of course you've got the far east you know in vietnam they're recruiting a lot of airbus pilots right now in japan and china and whatnot so there are plenty of jobs out there for these pilots but of course you know they're going to want to try and choose something closer to home not everybody will want to relocate their family some will be okay to commute um so there'll be lots of different situations but if you are a private jet operator or you own a private jet and you need to hire some pilots would it be a good idea to hire one of these guys from thomas cook well let me tell you this the pilots are coming from thomas cook are definitely very well trained okay high standard um i know some people that have worked for them they, they do it they did have a very good training program so you're going to get a good quality pilot but it's not said that that pilot is going to fit in uh, with your private jet operation because private jet operation is very different to flying with the airlines the airlines the pilot turns up at the office is given an envelope with all the information in there he goes through the notums the weather the, the passenger list, you know, the, the weight of the passengers and whatnot, chooses how much fuel he wants, rings up the fueler, tells the fuel man how much fuel they want on board. Um, they communicate that to the dispatcher. They file off the, the load sheet. The pilot signs that off and off he goes. Well, in the private aviation, the pilot's doing a lot more than that. And also, you know, also talking to the passenger. Uh, that's another thing that you don't do in the airlines. You just you go up to the cockpit, the door's shut. The girls in the back look after the passengers and you just do your flight. But in private aviation, it's a lot different. So, you know, you need to have, make sure that person personality match will, will fit. But just to use an analogy from, from football or soccer, as you may call it in the US, um, there's a, a one of the top uh, soccer coaches in the world, or football coaches in the world, is Antonio Conte, who recently was the coach for Chelsea. And I took them to the Premier League in its first year in the, in the, in the, in the Premier League, Premier League win. And um, he's now uh, training uh, Inter before he was Juventus coach. So he's had a lot of successes around the world. And when they ask him about what three characteristics does a player need to have in order to play for him? And he says three things. Number one, head, meaning mindset. Number two, heart, meaning they need to believe in the cause. They need to buy the, into the cause. And number three, legs, meaning they need to be fit. Well, um, in order to find the right pilot for your private jet outfit, well, they need to have the right mindset. So they have to have mindset for private aviation. Understand that it's just a lot more than just driving the plane, as I call it. Uh, the second thing is heart. They need to buy into your cause. And to do that, you need to pay them the right money and give them time off. There needs to be that balance. Um, there's too many private jet outfits today, which are doing a lot of similar uh, running similar rosters to the airlines. I was talking to a guy just the other day. He flew for two years for a, a company that has quite a number of private jets and he was constantly flying around the world. He said, in two years, I visited 174 different countries. I was completely jet lagged 24 seven. I drank coffee to keep me awake. I drank beer to send me to sleep. Um, he said, we were landing in Moscow, um, spent two hours after 10 hours flight, spent two hours cleaning the aircraft, then jump in a taxi for two hours to get to the hotel, sleep six, seven hours, and then go back to the airport and do another flight for 10 hours. And he said, you're constantly doing that for like two to three weeks and you're on and you're completely jet lagged, completely knackered, completely fatigued. And that, believe me, ladies and gentlemen, is very, very dangerous. So you need to keep an environment which, you know, the, the pilot's going to love working for, his, his heart's going to be there, and then legs. Legs, in the case of a pilot, would be they need to be fit, uh, they need to be trained well, they need to have a good background, but they also need to be trained well, and that training needs to be kept up to top standard. So you want to be giving them plenty of simulator training and other, other types of courses so that they're at the forefront of knowledge and they can perform at their best and keep you safe. Again, you just spent 25 million on a jet, don't try and go cheap on the pilots. So will these guys from Thomas Cook fill in? Um, well, if ideally, if they've flown private jets before then went to the airlines that's the ideal candidate but if they've never flown private jets before you really need to look at the head the heart the legs uh, uh, but you know those guys as i said they're well trained 
Uh, I'm sure if they've got the right mindset, they will fit in. Uh, maybe you want to team them up with with uh, with a private jet expert for maybe three or four months just to uh, teach them the ropes so they understand how this whole private aviation thing works. But that's certainly a possibility. And if you are uh, one of the Thomas Cook pilots that's just been laid off, uh, or even a flight attendant that fancies trying private aviation, um, it's something you should look into. Um, find the right outfit. If you need any help, I can help. Just bring me an email and see if I can help you and put you, or at least point you in a direction. So that's really uh, my analysis on the Thomas Cook thing, how that's going to have an effect on private aviation, what we can learn from it. Um, and let's just wish uh, luck to all those pilots that are out of work and those flight attendants that may find uh, employment uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I really do wish you that. Uh, so that's all from me on this episode. If you haven't subscribed to BizJet TV, I encourage you to subscribe, to like this video, give us a, give us a thumbs up and comment below. Let us know what you think. And that's all from Fab Poly, BizJet TV, and I'll see you on the next one.